but we are uh, officially on the air this evening um, uh, for our last collaborative session on the future. Uh, hopefully you all can hear me. Just to double check, it shows that everything's fine on my end, but just to be sure you can all hear me. Um, and you guys, uh, please uh, uh, put up a thumbs up, how you can hear me, thumbs up a smiley face or something over there. Um, you see the, we have some some uh, emotional hands over there. You can hit the, the smiley face over on the, on the left side of the screen. Um, so I'm happy that you can hear me clearly. Everything's okay. So, okay. I'm assuming we're good to go. Um, it's, it's an event and something happens. And then uh, we have a large group tonight, probably the largest I've ever done on Friday, but this is actually really good. Um, maybe I should have done this <coughs> in the evening. Um, earlier in the function, um, I'm glad to, I'm glad you all have it. Um, a few things I saw, I just this saw some folks commenting on the uh, upcoming uh, election and debates and things like that. Interesting uh, sort of uh, 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 fashion of views on all that. Um, so uh, this this uh, uh, again Russian. Um So you were saying you can't hear me. Uh, everyone says they can hear me. Um, so, um, so double check. So can you can you hear me all right now? Um, and then that class of the comment and um, now you this is one about Bernie Sanders and nothing. Um, we're not gonna get super political here. Um, okay. So we're all, we get we're on the air. Okay. Um, for those uh, under the hurting, um, and then my speech is. Uh, what it is as a cancer survivor, uh, and those who are joining for the first time tonight, too, I, I will apologize in advance for my, my speech issue. But um, and then if I talk too fast or you don't understand something I'm, uh, I'm mentioning, please, by all means, uh, raise your hand. There is a, 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 a hand uh, box over here. You can uh, push on, and I will see you, um, hear you first, and then uh, be able to respond. So. Um, Please, uh, by all means, use that if you um, are lost or something or can't hear me. Um, just uh, shortly, a few announcements. Remind you of your uh, rapid fire responses for this week and two by um, tomorrow night uh, at midnight, um, 11 59, as you know. Next week is our last week of the first week, so we have um, no uh, rapid fire. You have your um, final exam. And uh, so the uh, uh, eighth module is already open for you. Um, the final exam is on Thursday, which I'll talk about here in a moment. Uh, and really, our, our focus is on this evening is largely to help prepare you better for the final exam. Um, but uh, so no rapid fire next week, um, but we do have uh, a couple of chapters on property law, uh, real property, and uh, and uh, so personal property to, to look over. And uh, please, by all means, on that focus on on the, the PowerPoint. Uh, it helps sort of uh, summarize. Uh, those two chapters, I, I think, very well. And uh, um, uh, obviously, you need to read more into the chapters as well, but uh, um, the, the, the starting point for that is, is the PowerPoint. Um, let's see. Uh, final exam. And then next Thursday is the final exam. And um, uh, in the exact same format as the midterm was, there'll be 10 multiple choice in one essay. No surprises for you uh, in that sense. Uh, it is, uh, uh, I can't say it well, I'm going to spoil that because cumulative and, and stuff, if I can type, I should say. Um, I can say I'm sorry, you can type it. It's humans, I'm going to do that myself. I'm just going to type that. Cumulative. It is a cumulative um, a final exam, which means that it basically happens from you know, day one of our future to, to, uh, to now. And um, uh, but uh, to, rather than um, have you think of that as just overwhelming amounts of information, the, the real focus is from the midterm on to the final exam. So that basically means um, from the you know, criminal law, which wasn't covered in the midterm, criminal law, uh, uh, employment law, and uh, and property law, the largest person that's on the final exam. However. Uh, you can't forget courts, and you can't forget ethics, and you can't forget constitutional law uh, um, as they're fundamental to, to, uh, to business. 
Comcast as well. We'll see some some questions on that, but um, most likely you want to see more of those pieces in the in the, uh, multiple choice. But uh, I say uh, predominantly uh, focusing from the, the, the midterm on the whole exam, predominantly from the midterm on. So let me just spend a ton of time, um, for example, studying the chapter on administrative law or something like that. Um, but most importantly, from the midterm on, we can focus on ethics, constitutional law, um, public choice, and contrast, some of that. But, uh, but um, mostly from the midterm on. Okay? So you have two hours to do the exam just like in the midterm. It will be open all day long, same, the same way. And uh, and so that's, that's that. And, and uh, I have to say, I went to, uh, I, I did this in an announcement that I posted already, but I was um, profoundly, profoundly impressed with the quality of the essays um, many of them did. Um, I, I really, I think we had some spills about 108, uh, several 108, 105, 103s. Um, I did uh, extra plans on some essays, uh, 75 out of 70, just because of that, that, that was well written. So, um, uh, by and large, everybody did well, and as I mentioned in the uh, announcement that I posted, but people didn't do as well in the midterm, and then fully answer the problem, excuse <coughs> me, they didn't answer all the counts, uh, areas of law. Um, you know, they did well on, might have done the time, good, uh, good job on the, the issue and the, the whole thing and rationale that kind of it, but not fully developing um, either the three areas of law or even doing all three areas of law. So um, be sure you, you do that on the final exam and you'll be fine. Um, <coughs> excuse me. For those of you again who are new to, uh, to uh, this software, um, just I mean, take a minute to do this, but then most of you probably have found this already. But you have a group of emotion hands up on the far left underneath the, uh, the, the box where I am talking. You see my, my video now. Um, and then there's a, a, a civil right of a person with a, 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 you know, a time piece there. Uh, if you have to step away from, from the session, please by all means do that. Let us know you're out. Um, you have to raise a hand, press on that hand button, and uh, the others don't have to worry about this for a poll that you want to tonight. Um, most importantly, I'm going to put a, a new page up here. Um, most importantly, just for those of you, and, and I saw some people already playing around on the board when I first uh, signed on, uh, for those of you who are new, um, when you do Greyhound uh, rooms this evening, it, it's most important that you are able to use the light board for your particular team. And so um, there is a, a happy to invent an A, sort of a bar in the middle there, a uh, happy to A with some lines. That enables you to hit the test box. Um, it doesn't always cooperate. You might have to hit a couple times um, there, and then um, say, and I'm just doing this is a test. Um, it is very important that you're able to do that much because um, uh, you do not want to put your name next to what you have up there so that you get credit for um, participating. Um, I think this is not as a test, but um, there's a way to, to do that as well. And um, so um, for a moment, please, we'll take uh, one minute, especially for those of you who haven't used this system before, um, and those of you who have some play with some of the other things, there's you know, modules and Please try to, to do that and hit the test box up there um, and, and practice for a moment. Okay? And I said there are other modules um, you can do and, and, and how are we going to do all sorts of things. Um, uh, you can bounce around and put an you know, arrow, different things you want to do. Uh, and so the, the software enables you to do, to do that. Um, but then, most importantly, for newcomers, uh, the ability to be able to do a test box and, and add to that, um, which is important here. So I'm going to just leave you a minute to do that and I'll stop talking here.
events for bands. So a nice art group that you guys has had somebody has a, a big basketball or something on her, a bowling ball, that's a new job. Um, right? So um, I'm, I'm uh, sorry to uh, to wrap up the book. I'm going to do that at the moment here. And I'm um, going to go back here to, to page one. Um, sorry about that, you guys. I'm turning it off. So here we go. Um, back on our, our first, first page here. Um, and actually, let me really, I'm going to take 30 seconds if I may. Um, I haven't said this in the, the post I made to you all, uh, the announcement. I apologize for how tidy I was on the, the midterms. Um, uh, I'm hoping you saw the comments and you've seen model answers now uh, for the essay. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I, this life has been tough for me. I'm, I've been doing post cancer treatment. I'm fine, healthy. I'm just starting to improve my speech and swallowing ability. I'm 10 years out from cancer, so I have these days that I have to spend the whole day at the hospital. It's not a lot of fun, but it is and being done and it'll be fine. So um, I'm doing that and then having also moved in this man and moving uh, probably four times by the time I'm done. Um, I've been house-sitting my wife and I've been house-sitting um, with our three-year-old baby and a couple of places while we've uh, moved our home. And uh, so it's been uh, a lot of that happening while I'm doing all that sort of stuff. So um, I've been trying to squeeze all, all of this in and, and uh, be responsible to all of you too. So I apologize, um, but uh, you, you, uh, thanks, um, Christopher, you said put my health first. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be sure that I'm, I'm paying care of all of you too. So. Um, Wendy, you said model answers were helpful. Um, before we read that, then, have you guys, anybody read, uh, read comments um, about the midterm? Any questions? I guess I should say. Uh, my, the microphone is yours at the moment, and please everyone remember to press on the microphone button to the top, and you have to press on it again when you stop speaking. So, Mario, you have your hand up. The microphone's all yours, Mario, if you want to. Yeah, I was, I was wondering if you were looking for something specific out of us from the 70-point question on the midterm. Um, as a great question, Mario, um, you know, in all honesty, I, I, I've said before that there is no one right answer to these um, problems, and um, we all know, you know, you read a headline, and uh, there is the one right answer uh, to the, the, the um, you know, uh, uh, if a marriage uh, rights uh, has that may happen, I had not pronounce it over my speech, but over the fell. Um, there is a decision that the U.S. Supreme Court made. That is the decision. So, in a sense, we can say that's the right answer. But um, those who are legal scholars um, often um, will still debate whether it was made on, the decision was made on uh, solid, um, valid uh, law, law, legal reasoning. And so um, I, I'm not looking for one right answer. Uh, you know, um, people could have said either way, uh, whether they thought in this case, um, you know, uh, polygamous, um, you know, uh, four people who get married or not. It wasn't um, that definitive answer as to whether they should or not as to how well you're supposing um, that particular result that you chose. And um, those arguments certainly have been made on both sides. Uh, there are strong arguments, and some that are not as strong, but still are, are valid arguments to be made uh, about it. So it wasn't one right answer. And, um, and you'll see it, it, it uh, um, the same way on the final exam. Remember, I've, uh, I've helped on this uh, several times you know, that the uh, lawyers don't have answers, they have arguments. And, um, and always, I would say, uh, those arguments can be, can be broken down. Um, um, Alex, you said, no, no comments, he was a good job on the essay. Um, you know, um, I didn't comment on everyone's because I, I, I think I, I went to, I, I thought that in, in many cases, yes, if I didn't know how much it all means you do a fairly good job on it. Um, uh, specifically, where people have 
errors in terms of their interpretation of the law, I made some comments to help correct that, so you didn't have a misinterpretation of the law. Um, but uh, if you didn't have comments on the essay, um, more often than not, um, my, my hope is that for his is the people they, uh, you know, in the medium range or so, you would be able to have the moral answers and you would see very plainly where you should have maybe been um, more elaborating. So, um, and so, yeah, not, not how you ask, and maybe you touch on how to improve your essays. That's what tonight is entirely about. The whole night is about that. So, um, let me just, um, so let me uh, proceed with this. You see this, um, uh, words I have up here from the PowerPoint, which I will post for all of you also. There's a, a final exam review um, PowerPoint, which I will post after this evening. And um, this is a, a, a name they play in our face-to-face class, and I thought it would be appropriate here, too. We'll do it together with, uh, with one class, and, and then have opportunity to, to get some down um, in small groups as well. So um, this first bit, I want to just um, show you um, this is the, the, the um, YouTube um, web page, and uh, I'm going to take this all there, so don't go to it yourself. Um, you can follow along here, you should be able to see it. And um, before it starts, let, let, me, let me stop it for a second. Um, uh, before this starts, uh, what I'd like to explain is... As you I have tasted them, more of life the, than I can uh, ever imagine. You know, our, our here, uh, but your story has no end. Do you know what it's like to live forever? Your immortality has made you the greatest soldier of the Axon Cross in a war between our world and the next. I've waited my entire life for the opportunity to help you. Well, now's your chance. No, I want to raise. You're a dream walker. Get out. I need you to take me to the dream world. It's the only way to fight what's coming. If you die in there, you die out here. And I need you to wake up. You are in a trap. Back to here, okay, for a second. Okay, so YouTube should be, um, should be done. Um, so hopefully you hear him in them. Um, since as you said, the Supreme has, has all the answers. They, they strive to have the answers, and they, uh, the, the final answer at the end of the day, um, does that mean they, they, um, are not, uh, without flaw? And the answer is no, they're definitely flaw. Um, that's obvious to be able to pause the video. I don't want you to start and um, it's about three minutes of time. I'm trying to set it up so if you hold on for one second. Um, and then uh, rather than focusing on what the answer is, I'd like us all to be thinking about what um, kinds of questions should pop up in your mind. And uh, when you read uh, some facts pattern, some, some description of a problem, um, what um, what questions pop into your mind. And when those questions pop into your mind, usually what's happening is they're leading you to ultimately what the issue is for a shape of the law to decide. Right? And depending on how you, um, what question you choose to focus on, what questions um, you think are more powerful than others, that is the defining um, element of what the result is at the end of the day. Okay? So rather than solve the problem, I let you focus on the questions. And uh, if you will now, we'll go to this, um, to this uh, video. And I'll stop talking just for this. It's three minutes long. Um, it's funny, uh, but it gives an idea of how hard it can be often for us to in, in, in questions only, okay? So those of you who started the video already, please back up if you have a new end, and we'll start all at square one, and we'll start um, right now, if you let me do it, we'll, we'll, do, we'll go there, okay? First game's called Questions Only, and uh, this is for everybody. Uh, Wayne and Colin are gonna start. 
Uh, in this game, they can only speak in questions. They can only ask each other questions, nothing else, and they have to keep the story going. And I'll buzz them out if one of them makes a mistake or takes a long to think of a question. And then uh, if they make a mistake, the other guy will take their place. Your scene is you're on an international flight. You're on an international flight. You can take it away whenever you're ready. Tea? Could I have some coffee instead? Would you like some creamer? Is it natural? Oh, my God, what's that? Shouldn't you know? <laughs> I am anyway. Well, aren't you the stewardess? <laughs> Let me get the captain. <laughs> Someone wanted to see the captain? Did you take me to Cuba? You know where that is? Isn't that the little spleen shaped island? I think it's shaped like a boot. <laughs> Does anyone aboard have a bomb? What would it look like? Have you ever seen a drawing of a bomb such as this? No. <laughs> Why are you wearing your life vest? Do I look like something's gonna happen? Oh, what do you want from me? Will you take your clothes off? Can you handle it? <laughs> okay, hopefully you were able to hear all that. Um, it, it's a bit silly, but um, the, 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 the really is a little bit loud. Huh? Um, here's the thing, um, without noticing it, most of us operate in a way that we jump into conclusions. We want to know the answer and we assume certain things, right? So, um, what I, I let you do, um, I do this as a group. I'm in the, um, the case up here, and um, I'm a, we have a, another problem for us. And um, hold on one second, I'm going to pull this up here. This is my uh, first one, okay? Um, so what I want you to do, um, we have again like 27 of us tonight, so let me have a bit tougher to do this. But um, so here's here's the problem, and uh, instead of the, the non-lawyer way of doing this, and they were doing it, I want you to all imagine that the lawyers were saying, and I want you to um, not solve this problem, but then of all the questions you can imagine that were made to this very short, you know, one sentence, um, two sentences actually, and, and start thinking of questions. So, um, and as you have other people typing on any phone, once you take the microphone, please feel free to do that. Now you have a microphone to yours. Yes, uh, a couple questions would be what what were the skiing conditions at the time of the accident? You know, was there ice on the slope? Uh, should the slope have been closed? You know, we've got to look at the ski conditions of the slope. And then we have to look at um, <clears throat> Also, uh, was there a ski patrol on, on you know, was there, was there a ski patrol on duty? You know, I'd also like to know, uh, you know, uh, you know, regarding ski patrol. You know, I'll hand it over to Cyrus. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, Cyrus, um, feel free to let my phone. Yeah, you talked about, um, about the conditions of the slope. However, you could also look if you've rented any of the skis from the uh, from the resort. Maybe some of them were defective or they were um, had it was some sort of problem with those that you could make an argument of. I'm just wondering if those were the problem. Yeah, Charles, thank you. Uh, Liza, um, you, you have the microphone. Um, just like what he was saying, um, uh, was the was the ski uh, area was at fault? Um, did they put like a warning sign? Uh, did they block it off, or was it all intentional? Uh, yes. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to scroll back up. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Roger. And we're going to have some some great um, comments here. Um, so, uh, even whether someone, the person, uh, George, uh, was in task and um, whether the uh, conditions were, um, you know, dangerous, whether a warning sign there, um, 
uh, maybe an unauthorized evidence, sometimes people will lay off um, designated areas, uh, so we also know what's happening. And uh, renting equipment and roads, the equipment, the roads rented, what was the condition there? Someone here again said it was silent labor. Um, not, um, and so I'm just answering to it here. Um, Alexander said that um, what the lawyers do, they, they do not have health answers, but they have arguments that they do not seem to have health answers. That's the idea of it, right? Um, um, and also, I found this interesting. There's a test in, test in this number, and well, I certainly hope not, but um, I think that these days that's an appropriate question. Um, the age of this person. Um, so let me let me ask you this one question now. So all of you have very appropriate questions about this you know, two sentence um, problem. And um, at the end of the day, what what's our, our issue for a sort of law? So you have very simple facts and you want to know more. Um, what's our uh, issue um, uh, for a sort of law to decide? Which, and then as you know, the issue is always as uh, stated as a question. And then I'm going to take that. But what would be our, our issue for the sort of law to decide here? Was there a liability waiver, and how much does the liability waiver actually reduce the company's liability? Okay, Liza, you do that's, that's, um, Liza, you, you um, um, place any my phone as well. Was there a uh, an agreement beforehand, uh, safety warnings, safety issues, um, pre-checks, and uh, pre wex that uh, allowed him to uh, go on the slope and from there on, after signing it, did he follow the rules or did he ignore it? Uh, I, I don't really do and uh, uh, we both um, both of you have focused on, on the uh, potential issue of, of this person's sign. Um, we don't know that for a fact, but um, um, Alexander, you, you commented in the test box, uh, is ABC responsible for George's injury? At the end of the day, George is suing um, ABC, so George is the, the plaintiff, ABC uh, is the, <coughs> the defendant. So ultimately, we're, saying, we're asking a question of liability on the part of ABC. So depending on um, um, which side you're on, uh, and we focus on uh, renting more fast and developing the facts and evidence to support was he intoxicated, uh, was he in the wrong place, um, did he uh, you know, touch someone when he was um, snowboarding, all that, if you represent ABC. It may also be, no one asked this, but maybe he wasn't even on ABC Resort Corporation land. Um, uh, is the ABC Resort Corporation the right defendant? Um, might be something here as well. But the basic issue at the end of the day here is um, who is liable for his injuries, right? And um, I heard someone had a hand up here. The bell ran, ran on my side, but I don't see who had their hand up. Um, so uh, that's the, the, the fundamental question here at the end of the day. Who is liable for George's injuries? Is it something that he's responsible for, something that ABC is responsible for? And, and then so, uh, uh, Michael, uh, Michael Fontaine, you asked this um, in the earlier hearing, fast to write, uh, how can you write a better essay? One way to write a better essay is ask questions before you assume what the result is. And then, um, when you ask questions about what the fast pattern is, the, the problem, then you start um, developing some um, avenues of what the issue is. Uh, really, the primary issue is in the case. And then, what what does the law tell you about what the solution to that question is for the court? Um, that's how you do it. And then, the rationale is all supporting that position. And all the measured noise on the big phone, um, I gave you, on top of my head, I think there's six or seven, five or six different topics to choose from, and you chose three. 
it would be the same same process uh, for the final exam of the copy had no topics to choose from. Um, and um, so that I let you to do this. But um, basically, and then you didn't have to do um, facts issue of Hong Kong National as that format. But um, if you're thinking about this, the three areas of law you choose to solve the problem, that is your rationale. And you are going to then apply the different concepts um, test law from the textbook that you um, feel most comfortable with that fit the solution that you believe is what should happen. So then a, a well-developed, well-reasoned argument that is supported by um, evidence in the statutes, or test law from the textbook, or concepts, common law, all that, that can support why you think kind of things or not. Now obviously here, the not many facts. You have one sentence. He's struggling and he's paralyzed. So, um, naturally, you, to prove one side or the other would be very difficult at this point, but asking questions should help you with that. Um, Mario, you mentioned comparative negligence. See, as you that's very good. Um, what if the state was a contributory uh, negligence state where this happened? We don't know that. Comparative negligence. If he was found to be, say, 20% at fault, then he would uh, get an 80% 80, 80 of the recovery um, from what the jury was awarding him. Right? If it was a contributory negligence and he was 20% at fault, he would get zero. Right? That's what some states still do. If you contributed to your own injury, you don't get any recovery at all. So, um, all good questions. So, um, great job on the first one. Maybe one more, and then we'll have you get in 12 weeks. Okay, it says, I'll count this one more here. Um, let's see. This is come up here. I'm just waiting for the others. I'm going to um, put this one up. I'm just going to go to a, a new page and put it up here. Yeah, let's see this one. All right. So, um, same process, everybody. Okay. Don't come up with a solution right now. Come up with uh, the types of questions, and I will stop talking on this one too. Okay. Yeah. Was Abby intoxicated at the time? Because if one's actually drunk, then one can get any contracts that signed while drunk to be voided. Wait, say this as men are in the mark. Um, um, we, we don't know what type of drink she had, um, but we know she was drinking, and she was intoxicated <coughs> from the point that, um, excuse me, and most importantly, to the point that she didn't know she was entering into a contractual relationship. That would be significant. Um, Alan, you have your hand up. Yes, did she sign the contract under duress? Yeah, but was was she was she forced in there somehow? Um, something we might want to, to ask. Uh, let me see some other people typing in here. Um, she signed it. Uh, um, Liza was she forced to, and and uh, Alan said the same. Uh, Estella, <coughs> she was in a state to make a major decision. Um, definitely, if she's having drinks, you don't know. Um, Margaret, you have a great question. Does she even have the legal right to solve the husband? She's a CEO, but that doesn't mean she can solve this uh, corporation. Um, you know, very, very important. Um, you know, if it's privately held, she might not have that, that option at all. Um, <coughs> first of all, uh, was a verbal agreement? Um, and and um, you know, that's that's the end too. Um, and if you remember, talking about the, the statute of frauds, um, when you're talking about real estate, uh, you cannot have an oral agreement for real estate that's not valid either. So um, that would be important. Um, so, and the actual word of her company, uh, I think of this, what was it, Austin Powers, or when million dollars, you know, uh, was this company that actually worth much more? I might tell us she was intoxicated. Um, you know, it went for a very cheap price. Um, then, uh, uh, what, was, what was the nature of the meeting? 
um, was as close to the business. And then obviously, I was under that residency in Pasadena as well, somehow, when we did that. Um, so, <coughs> let me, let me um, remind all of you of this one point. So, this is a significant issue in um, contract law. Um, Having agreements and being under the influence while you sign a contract, while not advisable, um, does not mean at the end of the day that you don't have a valid contract. If you, um, there's evidence, you know, a, um, a server at the restaurant, a bartender, um, saw you with your head down in the bar, you were obviously that intoxicated, and um, the contract you sign looks up the letter X, it's not your name, so either then. Um, you uh, were seen um, teetering over and bumping the tables when you went to the restroom. All of that would show you were intoxicated. Um, most likely, without evidence, to show you you didn't have a um, sound ability and capacity, um, one of our main elements of contracts, to understand you were entering into a contractual uh, relationship. Right? Um, uh, aside from that, though, if somebody's had a few drinks, it doesn't mean they had so sign an agreement and had to be valid. So um, I'm looking over here some, some comments that people have. Um, so, yeah, Alan said, what did she swing over? What part of the contract? Um, maybe she's saying the contract wasn't valid. Um, you know, uh, uh, remember to know, to know about that. Um, uh, and the, 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 you're saying it's going to be worth a million dollars. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's and then a good question that we have here. Um, but they're already talking about saying this. Um, Tally, that's a very good point, too. Um, how long has this discussion been going on? There's lots of um, evidence to show you have and emails and other documentation about a negotiated process, and this was just a celebration of, of it. Um, I had the truth then that there wasn't any intent to enter into an agreement, right? Um, so, by the way, I'm not sure that you are getting that with the pyramid scheme, but uh, um, that's interesting. Um, uh, so, all right, so new questions from all of you. Uh, and then, um, what, uh, and then trying to have your focus on uh, any thoughts in a situation that you have. And this is in real life, too. You read something in the newspaper. Um, Start your, your little mind, your law mind, to jump out at you and say, wait a minute, something doesn't um, sound like right about this. I want to know some more information before we um, solve and have the answer to something. It, it, it uh, behooves you to spend a little more time doing some research into both sides of the story and um, asking for uh, evidence to to, uh, to uh, clarify what the result should be. Yeah? So, um, all right. So, uh, let me, let me, um, uh, Faith, let's leave your hands up here before we uh, move into the next stage here. Uh, microphone is raised for this. Um, the fact that she's suing them must mean that it was a written contract because if she had made an oral contract, they would be the ones suing her because if it was an oral contract, she would still be running the company. They'd have to be, they'd, They'd have to be suing her. The fact that she's suing them means that they over they actually took over her company. No, the the I mean if it was an oral agreement, um the you know, ABC would, would want to be um trying to uh, insist that it was valid I'm, I'm sorry, um S Y Z um no ABC I'm sorry, Charles Charles and A B C would want to be sure it was valid. And um because typically an oral oral agreement uh, wouldn't be allowed to real property. This is something else that in contract law to keep in mind all of you that just because uh, agreement is not in writing does not mean you don't have a valid contract. Um, uh, you know, a 50 page or 100 page contract um, you know, is, it can be uh, found in dollars and not in ways, and uh, an oral agreement can be found to be valid. And, uh, and this is valuable as a normal contract that is in writing. So, um, what's important is the proof of the intent of the counties and um, uh, all the elements that are there. Consideration, it's lawful, um, the capacity of both sides of the county. And uh, with the other agreement, you have more uh, difficulty proving because you have to 
uh, have not him in place of, of maybe expenses he, expenses he uh, suffered as a result of someone's promise to do something. And um, so you have to have documentation in a different time as opposed to an actual contract. And, and that's um, the, the difference in those kinds of arenas. Um, I'm going to show you this. And uh, we'll go in that here for a second. Um, sharing that. And um, so that. So this is um, one stage of this. So let me, let me actually you know, um, stand this here now. So, um, we were into a, a very large group. There's 27 of you, and myself and there's 28 tonight. Uh, I still have to separate us into four different groups. And um, in this uh, situation, I'm going to do I'm gonna give you four different problems. And um, I'm not sure we get to everybody, but we'll try our best to do this. And we're going to examine and notes on this. Um, and, um, and instead of being just uh, the questions only then now, what I want you to do is um, use that mentality, that sort of perspective of questions only, to um, drive you towards the answer, um, not answer, pardon me, um, the, the best argument to be made. Um, and I want you to try to do that as a team. So we're separating the four groups and there are four different problems. And um, after, you know, uh, about five to eight minutes or so, not you if you will, please designate some one person from your team to be um, the uh, uh, spokesperson to share with the class what your, your problem is about and what, how you, you know, what your solution is, okay? Does that make sense? Everybody, everybody okay on that? All right, I'm going to um, separate us. Those of you who haven't been in this before, but you'll notice uh, suddenly on the left side of your screen, you'll be in a different group. If you get bumped out of that, um, just sign that hand to uh, collaborate. I will notice you as you arrive, because it shows me that you arrived back in class again, and I'll let you hopefully back into the right group you're in. Um, but, uh, so the attention of me for a minute is I'm coming out. I'll, 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 Happy over the problems that each of your individual life was, but when they separate us into four groups. And those of you listening to the recording will notice it will be silent for probably the next five, eight, or nine minutes, and um, uh, that's that you will have to slip forward in the recording to hear what we, we're talking about. You see a really hard line at the bottom, and that's what we do on that. Okay? So, how long have been here? And we'll separate out in just one minute here.
but her initial ego dumped out. Um, but but the uh, group reunion, I think, we're in, in uh, group two, is that right? But so maybe we're here. Um, no, I'm, I'm having having new event uh, and no one also having a uh, what, what group were you in? I should have a blessing in there. No one uh, in heaven, I'm sorry. I mean, had to let everybody back here. It was a fast now anyway. So um, I'm going for one second. Uh, if I do that, and um, yeah. But um, we're back together as one class, and um, we are not paying for the second class. There's pairs, some pairs. We can start signing this now. Um, we're back for a second. I apologize for being this, but I'm not here yet. First time when you guys into Tim Tu, because Tim Tu doesn't have much on the board, but Tim Tu, you were very vocal in your group. So, um, uh, who did you choose as a, um, a person to talk about this uh, potential problem with? Who's, who's he representing from Tim Tu? Uh, well, Wendy volunteered, but I don't think we, we did this correctly. She, I don't think, figured out how to type onto it until too late. Uh, thanks, Alan. I mean, uh, if you want to, uh, um, you're, you're supposed to uh, apologize, but um, uh, if, you, if you will, you do be a spokesperson person for your group in this. So, uh, the, the class can see this. The problem is basically um, dealing with uh, someone who's uh, manufacturing uh, segment clothing. Um, obviously, we're talking, talking and thinking about building a factory in a developing country. And, uh, Part of the reason, as you most often know, is because uh, it means there's less regulations for business and it's more um, economically feasible, more profit driven, and so um, living conditions and wages and all that might not be as, um, but it's certainly not the same as the United States. Um, so, your question is what should you do about this? Um, uh, what what I can help you to support this move and why? And what, what do your team come up with? Does anybody from Team Two can chime in right now? If that's okay. I think our questions were um, basically just uh, what the restrictions, the few restrictions, like the working condition, the wages. Um, the maximum hours and environmental concerns. Um, questions to that: What would be the uh, the values of the company going in an American company going into kind of a developing country of that sort? No, so, um, uh, primary concerns about each of these items, right? I mean, uh, look at this is on the front page of the Seattle Times. Uh, you know, you are uh, now hiring people in another country uh, with this new factory, but the living conditions are horrible. Um, people you know, uh, earn a dollar a day. Uh, you know, it's unsafe for them to work there. It's very toxic for polluting, all those things. And uh, so um, a big consideration to take into account. Um, here, uh, though, you asked um, if you're living in ethics. And so, let me go ahead. Um, we're going to run out of time here anyway, um, but part of the reason I had you focus this way as teams is um, we practice first with this uh, questions only method, uh, which uh, Alan, your group is um, you know, focusing on good questions here, uh, but now I uh, suppose the rationale that you have uh, to support the position of saying yes, they should do this move, um, what what I'd like most of you who didn't do as well in the essay to focus on is, well, now I'm saying yes, they should do this, and the foundation of my ruling would be based on ethics. So what view would support this? Um, uh, maybe it might be easier to start off in the test, but uh, anybody wants to say, what, what um, ethics of view uh, or theory from our test would say, this is absolutely inappropriate. We shouldn't do this.
and everybody wants to take that up. Anybody in the class, too, for that matter, not just him, too. But uh, what, what I think some theory would say, you know, it's inappropriate to move the faculties who are developing Hunter because, um, you know, and elaborate, anyway. What, what I think some theory would say that's not okay. Um, Eliza, you have your hand up. Um, I think that it's uh, appropriate to um, put in uh, like a company or corporation to developing country because it does contribute to the economy and to help that country develop. Um, the problem is though is to see if we can actually import our regulations and the strict standards that we have onto the developing country so that um, there won't be any uh, environmental concerns or working conditions that needs to be brought up to attention. Yes. Okay. Um, Alan, you have your hand up there too. Um, yeah. Uh, I think my question would be, uh, does it take away from jobs from your con the country that you live in, that the company is out of? You, you, you might not on that part, but I'm still, we haven't answered our question here, but um, directly, hold on, uh, now your, your, your hand's up. Yes, Steve. I think the company or the organization has a responsibility to its employees one way or the other, uh, <clears throat> both its employees um, in, in its uh, residing present, presently residing country and also uh, the, co the country where uh, the, the uh, corporation may be moving. You know, if the company moves, uh, it's obvious uh, to this country. It's obviously going to be abusing these workers, which is unethical. So that's uh, that violates the organization's responsibility to its employees on that level. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll step step aside for now. Thanks. Uh, you had your hand up there. Yeah, Donald Trump says that all the outsourcing is a result of all the corrupt trade deals that we've gotten ourselves into, that other countries are taking advantage of us and killing us economically, that he wants to essentially renegotiate all the trade deals, make them fair and balanced, that their own politicians and their incompetency in negotiating when it comes to trade deals that causes companies to outsource, that the trade deals are put in such a way that companies, you know, they have pretty much no choice. The deals are just, it's just too good to outsource for businesses. Yeah, interesting point. I knew we would have to get back to our politics tonight. We're starting to that tonight, and uh, when we're finishing here, so I knew that you had your hand up too, and then I'm going to add one, one comment here on the heart of the bank. Um, Cyrus, did you have your hand up? No, Mario basically just covered everything that, uh, that I thought about. He did a good job explaining. Right, right. Let me um, just um, clarify one. How many ways we're expressing this? You, you all have great questions and great ways of, of uh, addressing this. Um, uh, and, and that's playing our questions then and questions only then is really fundamental to driving you to the issue and then coming up with a holding and resolution of the of the issue, um, the way you seem to uh, make, makes no sense to you, but using the law to support it. Here, what I'm not trying to get at is I'm I'm uh, having to wear a specific hat here. Here I'm saying what I think of you to support this move. And I think I don't remember who said it. Someone said we create jobs and help development in those countries. Um, I'm not sure who said that, but that's what I was getting at. If you want to say this is a, a valuable thing, it's good. Um, Donald Trump aside and outsourcing, you know, negatives aside, a, and then the negative is just to say you're not treating people well here in the United States either by having them lose jobs. But the ethical view of this would often say, people they go ahead and say, wait a minute. Um, let's take a utilitarian perspective. Okay? This is what I mean for your exam, I say, how you support your, your solution is you say, let me take one perspective. Um, a utilitarian view would say, what is the latest good? Not the latest number of people, but the latest good. And so um, consumers who get a cheaper, cheaper product, um, uh, and uh, you know, it might be more efficient and more productive for the business to do this overseas. It might provide jobs for people that didn't have jobs before. 
um, uh, you know, a sense of, a sense of which helps them improve their lifestyle and all that. That might be a utilitarian view. Now, the flip side of this, if you were to say, I didn't ask this, but if I said, which ethic of you would not support this move, uh, it should be simple to say, now, a duty based ethics would say, this is bad all day long for people. Um, it might help uh, stock value go up, it might uh, help someone make more profit, but um, what, if you believe in a duty based and pay on philosophical view, a manual, um, K-A-N-T, which I can't say his name, um, if you believe in his view, then you would have to say everyone has dignity and value and worth, and so by moving, uh, thankfully, they lose jobs here in the United States and you've impacted whole families and economies because of that, and you're overseas and you're taking advantage of people and having them work in bad conditions, et cetera, et cetera. So if you say any human being is a value, that's not okay, right? So I'm going to say there's one solution to this problem. Uh, Michael, you asked us at the beginning of, of the past, you know, there isn't one solution. But how you suppose it is, well, I believe it is, and this is, it is ethical, and I would suppose it by saying the utilitarian view. Well, I think it is not ethical, and that I would say by a very ontological view, not okay, right? So um, you should be able to do that with any problem that I provide you on the final exam. You'll be able to pick three different areas of law and then to apply, apply, apply. And I know you do well. You guys very much impressed me in the, in the midterm. We're over time. I'm going to stop. But Belinda, you need to hang up for a while. So let me um, pass the microphone to you. Uh, Belinda, I couldn't hear you. I don't know if it's time to use a microphone, but I couldn't hear you. Um, to, uh, you have to press the top button up above those if you need to talk, okay? And uh, try to write if you, if you still have a question. I see that the, the button is pressing. You can tell him, Belinda, but I didn't hear anything. So um, I don't know if anybody else can hear, but um, it's up in that top left area. Uh, it showed that you were talking, but I didn't hear anything there. Try one more time, Belinda, and then uh, we'll call the night here. Um, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I don't, I don't know if anybody else can, but um, um, I'm not saying who knows. Um, I'm going to, just for the sake of, of, um, of the recording, I'm going to flip through each of your rooms, various questions that you have, and then those of you who are over, over by about 10 minutes, uh, uh, please feel free to leave if you wish. If you have a question, ask me, but I'm going to just flip through these pages. Um, and so the, on the recording, this was Team One's question, and uh, they had a question uh, involving uh, ethics also, but during the, uh, in the law, also during the something that was uh, inappropriate happening in the business, and what the, the role of this um, particular employee, what, what should that employee do, and you have lots of feedback by your whole team uh, doing a lot on, on that on the whiteboard. Who's on uh, team number one? Um, team number two, so on team number three, um, this was their problem involving um, supermodel Naomi Campbell, and uh, she's uh, uh, doing some, some damage to her, her maid. And this, uh, a, a huge of this 
And so, at the end of the day, um, the maid is, is suing Marilyn and Campbell for um, for torts uh, that have been committed. So we would be identifying what torts were there. Um, and then, in this case, if we wanted to prove that someone committed a tort, we would say that they acts that were you know, committed assault or battery. Well, what's required for assault? These several things that uh, have uh, imminent harm. Um, you don't have to have physical touching. You have to have imminent harm. But a reasonable person would believe that they're, they are in danger. Um, that's where you have to have physical touching or something that isn't um, acceptable, that isn't wanted. Um, you know, those things. And you would then prove, prove that that way. Team uh, four, you had um, a, a problem dealing with uh, uh, someone in the art gallery. And, uh, 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 um, basically, an artist who uh, was uh, uh, doing showing work in the art gallery, and the art gallery uh, uh, owner uh, uh, said verbally that he would uh, help uh, pay uh, the the, you know, the art supply store money on behalf of this artist. And the question here is whether there's an enforceable promise. Is there a contract here? And then we look at the uh, elements of the contract, and then you would uh, ask questions about these facts here, and then support that with, well, did they meet these elements? Yes, 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 or no? And that tells us whether there actually was a contract and enforceable agreement or not. And, uh, and so asking questions and delineating your answers that way. So hopefully this was of use to all of you tonight. Um, I um, was, was hoping that you would uh, be able to use this particularly for uh, as a tool for your final exam, I said, the vast majority of you, I noticed, will not even need that. You did so well on, on that. Um, and those of you who didn't, we went very far off the mark. I think the, the lowest percentage anyone even had on the, on the essay was around 60%, six, zero. And, um, you know, really, uh, wasn't horrible. I think we've been, uh, you know, based on, on, on not fully answering. It wasn't that you didn't, uh, didn't do well in analysis, it wasn't you fully answering the problem. So, hopefully that was helpful. Have a good evening, all of you. Um, thanks for your uh, support, Mr. Hunter, especially being patient with me on, on raise. Um, I've had some health issues the past couple of years, and it's been uh, slowing me down, my, not my normal self, but um, I've uh, really enjoyed this hunger with you, and uh, um, you know, uh, welcome any comments or questions you have, particularly between now and the final exam. If you have questions, please let me know. Anyone wants to meet me in person or have a phone conversation or even set up a private collaborate like this, if I have three or four of you who want to do that, it may set up a time that will look for all of us, um, a time window anyway. Uh, I can set this up and you can go into private rooms and chat. Uh, it's an easy way to be anywhere with your computer and uh, to uh, talk about the uh, class or anything else you have questions on. Okay? So, thanks again, you guys. Um, have a good evening and, uh, and uh, thanks again for getting the Okay? Take care.